Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. I got another unboxing video today and I am super excited about this one. Uh, this actually comes from another YouTube channel that I follow. The channel is called Midi Sid. I'll link uh, the channel in the description. And the owner of the channel is a lady named Sheila. She has some really great musical stuff, but also is quite the uh, quite the electronics person and has made a handful of uh, circuits. This is one of them. And I'm super excited about this since I saw it on her channel. This is called the e theremin or the ether and it comes to me from the uk so that's it for the box here let's get this baby open uh she lives in the uk and churning out this cool stuff so here we go oh it comes with a qr code for the manual very cool and then christmas there we go all right here it is the ether you can see the the logo here and um, real quick, let me just show you kind of what it looks like. Let me give you a once over. So what you see here, very, very simple design, but super powerful. And what we've got here is you can see there are kind of two sensors. There's one right here, and then there's one over here. And you control it using your hands. Now, if you're familiar with the theremin, um, or if you're not familiar with theremin, let me tell you that. Uh, it was actually developed by Leon Theremin in the 1920s. That's an electronic instrument that was created in the 1920s. So he was way, way ahead of his time. But he created this instrument that had two antennas, and one antenna controlled the pitch, and the other one controlled the volume. So as you would play the theremin, you would kind of do a motion like this, and that would, you know, play notes. And it's actually still an instrument that a lot of people play today. There's some folks out there that have really mastered it. But this is sort of a, an easy version of that. It just has light sensors or some sort of sensor. I believe it's a light sensor um, opposed to an antenna. So additionally, you see on the back, there's this open header. You can just kind of see that. And this is another thing that Sheila did that I think was just brilliant is um, by default, it's just a MIDI controller. And so what happens here is we have somewhere around here, we have USB and then we have this uh, breakout plug for MIDI. So you can use it to power or to, to drive anything that accepts a MIDI signal, um, either over USB or over standard five pin MIDI with the breakout. Um, but additionally, these pins are here if you want to add a sound module. And she coded it so that if you get one of these little Pi Maroni uh, audio packs, um, and this is designed for a Raspberry Pi, if you're familiar with that, the, uh, the uh, Pi Pico, uh, anyway, then you can just plug it right into here and then it has a built-in sine wave oscillator. So um, I actually got this at Micro Center, my local Micro Center. I think it was like $16, very inexpensive. And uh, they had several in stock. So let's go ahead and get this baby open and let's install it. Now, if you install this, it doesn't change it from functioning as a mini controller. So you can still use it as a mini controller, but it will create its own sound. So you can see here's the little board, this little Pi Maroni. Um, and you can see it's just got two outputs there. One is a headphone jack and one is an audio out. So I'm assuming I just line up all of the pins and it should just slide in. Let's take a look here. Yeah, there we go. This always makes me nervous pushing things onto pins, but there we go. All right, that appears to be seated. So you can see putting that board on um, it still fits underneath there, but now it's added two extra jacks here um, for a headphone out and a, and a standard audio app. So there we go. Um, let's test it out. Okay, folks, here we go. We've got the ether here and you can see I've got the USB power coming in and then I've got the line out going over to the mixer. So now if I wave my hand over this, you hear a pitch. There you go. So in addition to the two sensors, it's also got these two buttons and these change the octave. So now we're in a lower octave. Back up, let's go up the other way. Woo, that gets really high. Okay, let's go back down. It's as low as we can go. Oh, geez. I don't know 
know if the camera's gonna pick that up because I just have ambient audio right now so I can talk along with it. But that has really got some deep bass. Okay, so obviously I added the sound module like I showed you earlier, and so that's why I'm sending audio out. But as I mentioned earlier, you also have MIDI out. So you can either use the USB and send it over a standard USB plug if the, um, if the MIDI device supports USB, or if it's traditional MIDI, you can use one of these little breakout plugs like this, and you can plug that in like that, and then you can plug a standard five pin MIDI into this end. So that will work as well. So let's try that. Okay, so I've taken this MIDI breakout here and I've plugged a MIDI cable and I've plugged this into my digital audio workstation. Now I realize I could do that with the USB just as easily, but to demonstrate this, that's what I did. And so now within digital audio workstation, I can pick any patch. So you see there's no audio plugged in at all here. So the audio you're gonna hear is gonna be coming from the computer. And by the way, this is ambient audio. Again, I'm not using direct audio. But now when I touch this, I've got a choir patch selected. Now choir might not be the best patch to, to demonstrate this, but let's try like, um, let's see here, let's try like strings. Let's see if I can do like a string ensemble. Let's see how this works. Okay, so let's change this to a flute patch and see what we get. That's kind of low, let's go up an octave here. Now again, you are hearing ambient audio, not direct audio. It, it sounds a lot better with direct audio, but I'm um, just kind of demonstrating what you can do there. Okay, this might be fun. Let's try a pipe organ. Let's just see what this sounds like. I'm not sure if this is gonna sound good or not. Okay, let's go down. Oops. Not too bad, actually. Um, so let's see what else we can try here. Let's try, okay, this is a harp. So there you have it. That was the ether or e theremin. And uh, one other thing I'd like to add, I mentioned that I follow Sheila's channel on YouTube, but she did not send this to me for free. I actually bought this because I do want to support uh, her company and all that. And so there's no like uh, bias here. I'm just giving my actual opinions of it. Now, as you can tell, this is my first time uh, ever trying to play a theremin, but um, I, I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, you know, it's, it's like, these are about $99 um, for the, for the theremin. And then you're going to, like I said, you pay another, you know, 15 or 16 for the, for the audio board. I'm pretty inexpensive for what it does. Very compact and small, pretty darn flexible, pretty darn cool. So again, I'll link uh, Sheila's channel in the description if you want to check it out. So if you like what I do on this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button for me. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon.